I'd like to let you in on a chapter of Western history that is rarely discussed. I don't know why they leave it out of the history books. It's, it should be in there as far as I'm concerned. It concerns a man in a restaurant in Kansas City about 150 years ago having a bowl of turtle soup. And when he got the bill, the price was so high that he just hit the ceiling. And finally, when he calmed down, he started to dwell on the situation, and he realized there was a whole lot of money to be made investing in the turtle market in general, in turtle futures. And what he did was he got him some gunny sacks and hired some turtle boys and sent them down to southern Texas where the land terrapins roam wild down there and gathered together a herd of, oh, 30,000 headed turtle, <laughs> the, the idea being to drive them from southern Texas to the railroad up near Abilene. <laughs> well, they got out there on the trail and there were a few drawbacks. On a good day, a land terrapin can do about 20 yards. <laughs> and, at that rate, it would take them 43 years to get to market, but they were blinded to the realities of this situation by the dollar signs in their eyes, and they, they stuck it out. You've got to picture this, you know, the turtle boys riding around them at night, singing to them, and roping strays. And it, it's not easy to rope a turtle, let me tell you. Every night while they were camped, the turtle boys had to get off their horses, walk over to the herd, take each and every turtle and flip them over on his back. 30,000 head. That was to keep them from stampeding. <laughs> uh, 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 they found out their little legs going in the air all night, wiped them out so bad they could only do five yards the next day, so they had to cut that out. Branding was sure a problem, as you might imagine, you know. One good thing, though, while they were camped for the night, the females would lay eggs. And then the next day, the herd would move off, and here would be this mass of eggs back here. And about three weeks later, it would hatch out into another herd, following the first herd, see? First herd hadn't got to the horizon yet, and here... <laughs> this guy just saw more dollar signs, you know. Just, he had this image of a whole string of hurdle turds. Turtle herds. Pardon me strung out, as it were, all the way from southern Texas to the railhead. Well, it would have worked. It really would have. But they got to the banks of the Red River, and sunning himself there was a mud turtle named Studs, Studs Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> he saw this thundering mass of turtle flesh coming at him across the prairie, and he got spooked. And uh, he dove in the water. The land terrapins, being not too brilliant, followed him. And, being land terrapins, they all drowned, and that would have ended it, but the, the turtle boys were too smart for that. They, they dug a huge pit, and they filled that pit with red-hot coals, and then they poured boulders in on top of that. Heated them up till they were red-hot, then they pushed them in the Red River, and the Red River started to churn and steam and boil and froth, and for eight months afterwards, the Red River ran turtle soup. Pure stuff. <laughs> Kept the Indians through a very tough winter, and... <laughs> Everyone turned out rather happy. The same man in that same restaurant a year later, thinking over the great turtle drive, said to himself, you know, if we could try it with turtles, why the hell not with cows? <laughs> that was the start of the cattle industry as we know it today. Um.